all right good afternoon youtube in today's video we're going to be going over the infamous push pull legs split so the reason why i say it's a bit infamous is because if you are familiar with my channel i am a bit more strength focused as you can probably guess from the name but here's a couple things when it comes to the push pull legs a lot of channels some of which you may watch uh, who are strength focused usually don't put out programs in this format for one simple reason there's just not enough recovery. The squat, bench, and deadlift are very taxing movements and are typically going to be something that will force you to use something like a full body or an upper lower so that you can get more opportunities for recovery. Now, with that being said, we have to be very clear about what a program or a split should do. A program should maximize consistency and reliably produce results. So safely and reliably produce good results, right? That's that's what a program should do. Can a push-pull legs do that for size and strength? Yes, it can. The thing is, some people are just either unwilling to put in the like the necessary thought to recommend it and just say, oh, just do an upper lower. Oh, just do a full body. Or there's just, it's just the fact that you will come to see when you look into this video, there's just so much content so much information so much that needs to be discussed in order to make a push pull leg split work for size and strength the end even when i go over this video it will not be perfect for size and strength in my opinion but i do think that this is a, is a way to organize a push pull leg split to get you better size and strength results so let's get into the video I have to be very clear that the push pull leg split is my least favorite split, like I mentioned, because I am more strength oriented, because I do use the barbell compound movements and I highly advocate them. I find that push pull legs is very difficult to program. You are going to be hitting most movements and most muscles two times per week, but you're going to the gym six days a week. Going to the gym six days a week is not inherently bad. But doing compound lifts six days a week, that becomes very difficult to do the stronger you become. I would much rather recommend someone do an upper lower or a full body and then on those two other days do something else. Either an arm day, a cardio day, a conditioning day, a bullshit day, you know, a fun, like fun with your friends, fun with your girlfriend, you know, like maybe even doing some other activity that's um, fun, active and healthy, right? That's generally what I recommend. But I do understand that there are people who are, you know, very passionate about the gym, who want to go every day, and they should be rewarded for their efforts, and they shouldn't just run themselves in the ground and be told, you can't do a push-pull leg because it's suboptimal, bro. That's just not what my channel's about. If you're going to be doing something, like I'm a power builder. If I'm going to be doing power building, I should be told how to do it properly. If I'm going to be doing a push-pull legs, you should be told how to do it properly and what to consider. So... On a four day upper lower or even a full body with a bodybuilding day, you are going to be getting three days of rest per week. On a push pull leg split, you're getting one day of rest per week. So four day splits give you more opportunities for recovery and you have to remember that you do grow at rest. What you do in the gym is very important. There is no way, like unless you work really hard in the gym, you can't grow. But here's the thing, that growth occurs at rest. So you need to give your body a sufficient reason to grow and then follow it up by giving it a sufficient amount of time to rest. And another thing you have to keep in mind is that rest days allow you to work harder on each training day. So that's super important. So like I already mentioned, a split is meant to maximize consistency or sustainability and reliably induce progress and a push pull leg can do this. So this is my kind of like experiment, my kind of uh, thought process of how I would make a push pull leg work. Okay. So you know how I mentioned I'm a power builder. So with power building, you're kind of like trying to get somewhere in between with size and strength, right? People will say you can only do one, you can't, you can't train for both. And it's like, they're so... They're so strongly correlated that while they're not one-to-one, -one, while they're not equated, you can never separate the two, right? If you maximize your training for strength, it will be different from maximizing your training for size. But you can be somewhere in between the two, and there is a curve and a relationship that exists between the two. As long as you're landing somewhere on the curve, right? So you're landing on the curve. You're, you're like, let's say you're more strength focused, and you, but you still want some size. This is, you, point C is you. Let's say you're more size focused, but you want a little bit of strength. Point D is you. 
you are training optimally. This is what optimally means, okay? It's efficient, it's possible. If you train within the curve, you know, you're balancing size and strength pretty well, but you're training very inefficient. You're leaving gains on the table. A lot of people fuck up by trying to be here. Point F. They're trying to do something impossible. They're trying to do something unfeasible. Why am I showing you this? Because a push-pull legs is very similar to this. Whereas you're trying to maximize sustainability and progress, those are your two variables. There's a relationship between the two, and you need to be very clear about whether or not what you're doing is optimal, and this is my way of going about that. So... With all that being said, you continue to insist on doing a push-pull legs, and you have a strength goal. If your goal is hypertrophy, a push-pull leg split can still work very well. A lot of the things I'm going to say still apply, but they're not 100% or something, and not everything I say will apply to you. Because... This is how to balance things like the basic barbell compound lifts. If you're training mostly with isolations, mostly with machines, then you could make an argument about push-pull legs, but then also have to remember, you could probably train certain muscle groups more than twice a week, and if you are strict with a push-pull leg split, you're only training everything twice a week. So if you do have strength goals and you want to do a push-pull leg, you have to undulate your intensity very carefully. You have to use more isolation exercise exercises and you have to be more careful with your progression. Push pull legs is the easiest split to undertrain and overtrain on. So, with that in mind, you also have to recognize that the squat, bench, and deadlift may not be the best for hypertrophy. I'm not saying they're not good for hypertrophy. I truly believe that they are among the better exercises for hypertrophy, but that also will vary from person to person because the squat, bench, and deadlift are very specific or at least influenced by your leverages and strength is very much is a multifactorial thing based on your lifestyle leverages genetics everything like that right and these movements just might be more taxing to you for all those reasons so you have to do an assessment about which variations of each lift gives you a better return on investment so maybe uh, because you have longer limbs a floor press might be better for you because it equalizes the range of motion Maybe you can do something like close grip or feet up or incline because these are self-limiting variations. They're harder variations, which will challenge the muscles more and then get the muscles bigger and get you stronger. Same thing with a squad. You're trying to bias your quads. So I recommend high bar, safety squat bar, front squats. I didn't leave. I did not put on um, hack squats here just because hack squats, from my experience, don't transfer over to the squat. They do build up the quads, but... If I were to add a hundred pounds to my hack squat, I don't necessarily find that hundred pounds on my regular barbell squat, unless I am keeping barbell squats in the program at the same time. But that's a point for another day. And your deadlifting should be primarily done with Romanian deadlifts, stiff leg deadlifts, deficits, pause deadlifts, maybe even something like a trap bar. Fatigue management is key when you are trying to do a push pull leg with basic barbell movements you are training six days a week so if you are training those difficult movements and you have them in a six days a week program where you like cutting yourself short of some opportunities of recovery there are a couple options either intelligently distribute your workload or go on an extended quote unquote weekly plan so doing a eight day split a 12 day split 14 day split so you're only deadlifting once every 14 days or something of that nature, right? And here's another thing that I highly recommend. If you want, I truly believe that the back is the most resilient muscle group. It is one of the most important muscle groups to train because the back is just the muscle group that benefits every single lift. Squat, bench, deadlift. I promise you there's no one who has any appreciable amount of strength in any one of those lifts who doesn't have a big back find a bencher without a big back find a deadlifter without a big back obviously find a squatter who doesn't have a big back to hold that weight you won't find it so that's why i put a pull on every single training day now there's no magic ratio there's no like you know myth and all that kind of stuff that you need to abide by but here's how you can kind of make that play out so that way you're not overworking yourself there are four ways that you can think about pulling exercises horizontal pull vertical pull a lat isolation, and then rear delt work. If you 
mix in these variables, mix in these exercise variations and everything like that, you can use that to modify just how much recovery you need on each day, which movement, which days are harder, how you can undulate intensity and how you can manage fatigue. And here's another thing, your leg days and your back days will feed into one another. So when it comes to your squats, a good squat day should include some type of hip hinge. It should include your Romanian deadlifts and everything of that nature. That's why I recommend that deadlifts go on leg days, but the dead, the back is being heavily used on a back on a leg day. And then what does that leave on your back day? So that's why push pull legs is one of those tricky things that you need to work around. So here are some very common training mistakes. Don't train hard on a push pull leg six days per week. Um, this is what I mean by that. If you are using barbell lifts, if you are using the big barbell lifts and you're training them extraordinarily heavy, if you are training them with high amounts of volume, you're going to run into you're going to run yourself into the ground fairly quickly. This is why I recommend that you do things where you either lighten the load, use isolation exercises, use machines, and have different priorities on different days. Okay. Beating the books, trying to do more than you did last time is very important to is a very important skill to develop earlier in your training um, stage, like uh, or your training career, right? But as you get stronger, as you get, um, as you start being able to lift more and more weight, it becomes much more difficult to have multiple hard efforts per week. So then you're going to start having to do things like heavy days and light days, primary days and secondary days, um, volume days and intensity days and things of that nature, right? But you have to remember, you're on a six day split. Something's got to give, something's got to be light. Some, you need to have something in the program that will allow you to recover. And I will show you how I do that. Because you're training two times a week, like if you are strict with the push pull legs and you're only training things two times a week, that means some things are going to be under trained, like your back, like your rear delts, like certain small muscle groups. The, those are things that happen on a uh, push pull leg. And then I already mentioned how a good leg day will incorporate the posterior chain and the traps and everything like that. So some of the best exercises for the lower body are going to involve those muscle groups. And that's something you need to be careful of. So here's what I recommend. I recommend a legs pull push split. Now, Jeffrey Brady Schofield has a great guide on push pull legs, which he does a pull, um, pull push legs. And that's a great way of doing things. Here's the only issue. Regardless of how you do a push pull legs, you are always going to run into the issue of a leg day and a pull day running into each other some way, somehow, right? So if you do pull push legs the very next day after your leg day is a pull day and arguments can be made in favor of one or the other but what i have done is that i think your second pull day should be more bicep focused the arm exercises are very easy to recover from they're not very taxing this is basically putting an arm day into a push pull legs but it's done in a way that's still relevant tasteful to the split and still productive and at the same time gives you better recovery so there's that and the push day in between will definitely spare you and give you some recovery time and everything of that nature so that's that still stands but i wanted to point out that isolation of bodybuilding work is easier to recover from so you want to kind of mix that in and put that in on a certain day and i think that it works really really well on that second pull day to make it like an arm day to make it like a um bodybuilding day or something of that nature, right? So exercise selection on pull days is also going to be key because your lower back is going to be, it's very easy for your lower back to be put under a lot of load on a push pull legs. So you want to be doing things like chest supported rows and machine stuff on a lot of different variations, okay? So volume and intensity. This is a short slide because I'm probably gonna just kind of have to like <laughs> talk about it a bit in my head, but you're doing a six day split. So there's a couple ways you can do about this. You can do a, Heavy, light, medium kind of split. So let's say you have your heavy leg day, your light push day, and a medium pull day, and then you kind of like undulate that, and then eventually, and then you kind of like uh, split it up so that way, like there's a medium, uh, medium leg day, a media, uh, hard push day, and whatnot, and kind of undulate that. That can add a certain level of complexity that might just be a bit. It's easy to get lost in. Um, or you can just do like a heavy light split. So you have like a heavy pull, a light push day, then a 
then you do your heavy leg day or whatever, you know, those are things that you can do. Essentially, the idea is just this. You should have something in your program that's kind of put on maintenance. If I were to do a push-pull legs, I would honestly put my quads and my legs on maintenance and I would try to push a bit more, more so on my pulling or my deadlifting and my benching. So picking two exercises of the three or four or five or six, whatever um, compound lifts you believe to be the most important, picking two of them and then focusing on those on the a split will make things a lot easier, okay? Having days where some things are put on minimum effective volume or maintenance volume is going to be also very effective at making sure your recovery is being able to be managed and then just trying to push progression on specific days and other lifts. So that way, not every, not all six days are going to be pushed for progression. You're not trying to beat the books on all six days. There are your days where you're trying to progress and there are days where you're just trying to, you know, disturb baseline, get a good workout, get a good pump, you know, that kind of stuff. I don't recommend you do like a volume intensity. So like, let's say you have a vol, like, let's say you have the first three days are all volume based and the last three days are all intensity based or you alternate between the two. The reason being is that a volume day and intensity day are essentially two hard training days. On one day, you're trying to go closer to failure with volume. So that's six to 10, eight to 12 rep range. And then on the intensity day, you're lifting heavier loads. And by virtue of that, you're going to be closer to failure per each rep. So you have to be a little bit careful. So heavy, light, medium, heavy, light are great examples. Essentially, you're just trying to put something on maintenance. You're trying to keep something light in the program so that way you can push harder on another day of the program. And then on volume intensity days, I don't really recommend it, but there's ways to get it done. You can kind of just mix and match between the two. And this is just something that it's more conceptual. It's just more so how you can think about your days and what I want you to consider if you are putting together your own split, regardless of the push pull legs or not. So let's talk about the first three days. Your first day is going to be a squat focused leg day. You're going to do your squat variation. You're going to do some type of hip hinge, like a Romanian deadlift, maybe even a deficit stiff leg. Uh, good morning. Um, you could put a weighted back extension here as well. Then you do some type of vertical pull for some decompression, some quad hypertrophy work. So leg press, hack squat, leg extension, single leg press, anything like that. And then you can do your appropriate bodybuilding work from there. On most of these days, one thing you can even do is just do the first four exercises, first four or five, cut out that sixth one, and then add that in um, when recovery allows. That's one thing you can do. So for the bodybuilding work, I recommend biceps, quads, delts, calves, and abs. Reason why I didn't include hamstrings in there is because you're going to be doing hamstrings the next day on your pull day. You're going to do some type of row variation, something for your upper back, a lat isolation exercise. So it could be pullovers, straight arm pull down, something a bit lighter, but something a bit targeted for your back. So think about exercises where you get more out of less weight. You do some type of back extension exercises. So a glute ham, like a, like on the glute ham raise machine, uh, the actual 45 degree back angle kind of thing. I highly recommend you put that there. Um, so that way you're building the deadlift or you're building the musculature of the deadlift using easier to recover from exercises because they're not being used in a deadlift. You're just taking the pieces and then hypertrophying them and going from there. And then on your push day, you have your primary press, press, a machine pull, a secondary press. Then you do some rear delts as your antagonistic movement um, or antagonistic musculature um, exercise. And then you can do like either an overhead press, maybe some side delts or um, more rear delts if you just want to be super rear delt oriented and whatnot and uh, go from there and then triceps. You can even superset some of those to condense the push day, add in a couple of things, but that's generally what it is for the first three days. For the last three days, your leg day is now going to be deadlift focused. So you're basically inverting what you did last time. You're going to be doing a hinge first. I recommend a machine squat variation, but goblet squats can work here. Um, so that would be a good one. Uh, row variation, I would recommend a chest supported one, but because this is a day where your lower back is going to be fatigued more, you can have a freestanding one like a pen lay, a barbell row. Just be mindful and really monitor how your lower back is handling all of this and then adjust accordingly then you can do a lower body then two slots for lower body of hypertrophy of choice so biceps because biceps are the most important muscle of the lower body <laughs> and then quads hamstrings go here uh i meant i that was supposed to be typed in down here sorry about that but yeah hamstrings can go down here as well calf work more ab work um can also go here abs can be done every day I have to be completely honest that I do 
tend to skip abs quite fairly, so then you can, and that kind of reflects itself in my programming. But if you are better than me, and I would hope so, then include abs um, on each training day, or at least put them on this day because they are pretty good antagonistic movers for something like your deadlift. Following that, we have your pull day. And here's something that's kind of interesting. You can start the day with chin-ups. I'm actually going to recommend that you start the day with bicep curls. I want this to be your heavy barbell bicep curl day. I want this day to be you going into the gym and doing the best bicep curls you've ever done in your life, trying to progressively overload your barbell bicep curl, and then you do some chin-ups. Reason why I recommend this is because your arms are now going to fatigue first, meaning your lats get more opportunity to rest. So this is essentially an active rest day for the most part. Then you're doing some lat isolation exercises, which is very light, very easy to recover from, still stimulates the musculature. Then you do some forearms or maybe some additional bicep work, um, rear delts or more bicep work, forearm work and whatnot and abs. And then finally, I have a push day where this can be kind of like a volume bench a or a like a secondary bench press day or an overhead press day. So primary press, some type of machine pull, vertical pull is preferred, but you can be a row. Um, it just kind of depends on what it is you're trying to do, what it is you're trying to prioritize and uh, get better at at this current moment. Um, some type of secondary press if it is an overhead press day one thing i like to do is i like to do um, overhead press dips and then maybe like dumbbell bench or close grip bench or something of that nature if it's a bench press day then i do barbell bench dips and then some type of overhead press so <laughs> essentially the same thing just the order is inverted so now that's it for the slides so let me actually show you the actual program that i'm going to be uh, including this is the stand strength push pull leg split. So let me increase the size of this, okay? So day one, you have your high bar squat. When you get this, I recommend keeping a copy for yourself in your own drive. And then you can kind of hit like, you know, some options I like have here for what I recommend. So you have your high bar squat, Romanian deadlift. And like I said, you can do a lot of other things here. Deficit stiff legs, um, good mornings are a great exercise as well. It just kind of depends. If you do good mornings, I'd recommend you up this to um, three sets of eight to 12. Then you do some pull-ups to decompress the spine a bit. Leg extensions, I think are a e really easy way to add things in at first, just to kind of get used to the frequency, get used to the volume and whatnot. I like to err on the side of safety with something like this, just because it's, like I said, it's a lot of things can go wrong and it's, I think it's better to actually undertrain first because then you can kind of find like your sweet spot a lot easier from there. Building up to your sweet spot, a sweet spot is better than trying to come down to it. So, because there's that recovery process involved. So try to build up to your sweet spot, not go down to it. Then from there, you go into your bicep work. So I do like some heavy bicep work on this day. So easy bar um, or barbell preacher curls or strict curls are great here. And then some abs or calves. Um, that's your leg day. Then coming off of that, we have your pull day. So I recommend something like a penlay row, bent over row, chest supported T-bar row, seal row are another great exercise. Followed by some trap bar machine or barbell shrugs. For these ones, I actually recommend going strict with this. I think that because you are trying to, I would like, uh, I recommend like trying to uh, manage your fatigue and everything like that a bit better. I think being strict with your shrugs is going to benefit you more. Um, you still can go heavy, especially like, well, let's say with a weighted stretch at the end, but I would recommend that for that, you actually just do as many strict reps as possible and then do an extended hold at the end rather than just loading up as much reps as possible and trying to, you know, shrug it up and whatnot. Then this is your appropriate lat isolation work. So the two that come to mind for me are pullovers and straight arm lat pull downs. Um, I think that those are great exercises to kind of go with that. But you can use something like those, like uh, exercise from like N1 or uh, Coach Kassam or all those biomechanics dudes who like, you know, really turn their bodies and squeeze and whatnot. Like as much as I make fun of it and everything like that, I think this is the most appropriate place to put it. When you're trying to manage fatigue, trying to get more out of less weight, I think that's an appropriate place to put it because elsewhere in the program are all those hard hitting heavy stuff that people should not replace um, with those, you know, more biomechanically correct mind muscle connection kind of stuff. The mind muscle connection is important. Don't uh, skew my words. But should it take precedence over um, an exercise that is time tested and progressible? No. Then some back extensions, 8 to 12, hamstring curls, and the bicep upside rows. So 
one thing you can do, like I said, one thing you'll notice is that some of these exercises are only two sets. Over time, you can add a set to these exercises, which is, like I said, building up to your sweet spot and going from there. Another thing I recommend doing on these exercises where there's only two sets are is to add intensiveness techniques like drop sets, rest pause, supersets, giant sets, um, mile reps, uh, bulldozer method, whatever it is you want to call it, whatever it is you want to add, something where you're just going beyond failure in a safe way to these exercises where there's only two sets so that way you can kind of gauge and see like i can work harder i can handle more volume i can recover from it and then you add that in the next week then you have the bench press you can have variations here so floor press larsen spoto incline barbell bench dumbbell rows you can there's a lot of different pulls that you can do in this on the push days this is something i wanted to mention too on the push days i recommend that your pull work like your let's say your lat work and whatnot is only two sets reason being you have a shit ton of pull work in the program. You have a whole pull day. You have your leg day. You have a pull type of movement on your push days. So there's back work being done every single training day. So on certain days, only do two sets. On the push day, I think that's when it makes the most sense. If you need to bring things down, just put all your pulls to two sets a day because you have two or like, you know, you have two, if you have two sets a day, um for six days that's already 12 sets that's very minimum uh that's like kind of like the minimum for most things but then you, you double that let's say you have two exercises at two sets a day then that's already 24 reps which is probably close to your maximum so you might you have to adjust this accordingly there's no program that's going to be perfectly written off the bat you have to adjust you have to modify you have to experiment just because i didn't write in something doesn't mean you can't do it and just because i didn't put in a certain exercise variation doesn't mean it's not a good thing to put in that slot you have to play around with this and see what works for you so let's say here because you did like all that kind of stuff maybe this is a good place to do like a lap pull down or something like that right and lap pull downs probably won't affect your deadlift all that much so that's something you can do there you can do your appropriate like chest work or shoulder work or something of that nature and then going from there these are things that you can they, like you can adjust this you can modify this this is just to give you a template just to give you an example then you have your deadlift four sets of uh four to eight um hack squats so some like hack squat another thing you can do here is um uh, something like belt squats leg extensions even like maybe you'd be putting leg extensions further down here so that way you can still get something like a bit um more specific in a way um but yeah like quad tension glutes all that kind of stuff can go here as well and you can multiply that it's just i would recommend being a bit more balanced so there's that then on the pull day like i said you can invert these i'm not saying you can't the reason why i didn't is just because i wanted to give you a bit more time to recover and i wanted the limiting factor to be something that's going to give out sooner so that way your back can recover that's the general idea i don't necessarily know being completely honest if that's the best thing but in my head it sounds like a great idea because of the amount of pulling that you're just doing and this should not be your first program 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 all right so you should run something like a bit more novice friendly like any other program that i've written any other program that another reputable coach has made whether it be an upper lower or a full body or something like that just so that way you're already used to having a good amount of frequency like four times a week frequency on your back so there's that finally on your push day this can be like i said a secondary bench day or a overhead press day so if it's an over if it's a bench day you're going to do a bench press variation some type of light um back work probably just to pump up the muscle you know just keep things balanced then maybe some pec deck and reverse pec deck and then a light unilateral pull that uh you know that biomechanically correct row and everything um and then like let's say a shoulder press and then long head of the tricep worker and you superset that with side or rear delts if it's an overhead press day you do overhead press you do dips and then you do a chest squeeze interrupting each of them um, with some type of pull just to give yourself an opportunity to recover you can even do abs there if you wanted to just to give yourself some appropriate time to recover and then always finishing off the day with some high rep long head of the tricep work um and side or rear delts so that's it that is my push pull legs if i this is how i would run a um, push pull legs if this is um 
what I did when I did run a push pull legs in the past was everything that I said was wrong with push pull legs. I did all of the mistakes of trying to have a hard, heavy compound movement every single day. Um, and it just doesn't work. The, the reason why the bench press kind of gets away with it and pressing mo motions overall get away with it is just uh, because they respond pretty well to that. But yeah, you have one hard squat day. You have one hard deadlift day. Your back days should be light. I I'm probably didn't do a good job at like keeping uh, being clear on that. Your back days should be light and you should use exercise variations that are self-limiting and are things that just recover fairly easily. So your pull days, um, I mean... And then that about covers it. So you have four hard training days. And then the other days are like days that should be relatively easy to recover from. So that makes it very similar to what I would recommend in the event that someone wanted to add more days on an upper lower or a full body. They do something else entirely. So your pull day, you have a pull day that's kind of more like a bicep day. You have push days that are not too insane. You split up your squat and deadlift and they're only being done really once a week. Um, I think that that's how you would manage a push pull legs responsibly. Now, when it comes to progression and everything like that, like I said, pick two days. So do you want to progress more on your deadlift or your squat? Do you want to progress more so on your bench or your overhead press? And then just modify accordingly, run any progression that you find on, whether it be my channel, Steve Shaw's channel, Bald Omni Man's channel, there's a lot of ways to progressively overload, a lot of ways to progress. Um, generally speaking, what I like to do is just, you know, you can just do a, do a dynamic double progression, like, like you know, the revolving rep range, the rep goal system, something like that. Um, those are very clear ways to progress. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. I hope you found this useful and let me know your results. Let me know how you like the program. Let me know how it has affected your consistency. And I look forward to hearing back from you next time. Have a great day.